Andy, here we have a article review from Dazzlecat that we are going to go over. So let's take a look at the River Lion. Or River Lion. And it looks like, okay, so we have aw, some cute stuff here. Cute pictures. We do have a lot of side articles. Okay. And it looks like we're doing mostly excerpts from a journal. Okay. So that's good to know that this is not a non a pseudo nonfiction article, but it is written in a in a more journal type of point of view, and so that way we can uh, have a better understanding of what we should be looking for, and you know give it a break on the um, the grammar and stuff like that. It was a long, a mournful sound that rivaled the howl of a wolf. It held a slow, melancholy, melodic warble to it that made it clear that this was no wolf call. I headed in the direction of that call, a roar, with that strange, slow warble carried through the air from the same direction. Whatever was making these sounds seemed perturbed. That's a be a river somewhere. <laughs> Beautiful. I hurried to catch a glimpse of it before it moved on. It took a few minutes. I made my way along the forested ridge before I came out of the trees. Now I stood upon the edge of the ridge that was a small cliff dropping down into a river several feet below. My eyes were not on the precarious place I stood, but upon the long, sleek creatures in the water. That's adorable. I love cute animals. A dozen of them sat upon rocks near the cliff. Several of these were smaller, maybe half the size of the bigger ones sitting with them. But smaller still meant they were half as long as a man was tall, and I quickly realized these were young ones. The bigger ones, about as long as a man is tall, were females. Out in the water was another one. This one was easily twice as long as a man was tall and had to be a male. He stood tense, muscles rippling under his fur. It was not me he was staring intently at, but another massive male that came out of the trees. This new invading male went into the water. Okay, you are using the um, as long as a man was tall as a unit of measurement. Um, you you could use, I, I would still, I like the description because I think it's a good reference point. This is, okay, yeah, it's about, it could be about five feet, five and a half, six feet long. And I, th I think that's a really good thing, but you're using that same phrase multiple times. Uh, you could just say the length of, the, say the, as long as a man was tall the first time, but then you could say something simpler as is uh, the length of a man or something like that, uh, just to, to tighten it up and to avoid the repetition. But see, I like the description it's the frequency of that same description that feels a little repetitive. And uh, I don't know if they, a person in their journal would do something like that. They probably would. But uh, we do want to, even though this is a journal, we still want to have some flow of the prose. Like you could say, um, easily twice as long as the female. You know, and we can say, okay, the female's about the size of a man. It's just twice as long as the male. Okay. I sat down on the cliff and scrambled for my journal to sketch all I could see while this amazing moment happened beneath me. Barks and roars sounded from both of these big creatures as they bobbled up and down in the water, puffing out their chests. They flared out their manes that were 
that then collapsed back against her neck as a thick ruff. Okay, manes, because we don't really have a, a, a manes here or here, but yeah, that's going to be interesting. They flared out their manes that then collapsed back against their knucks as a thick ruff. They backed, they back dropped down into the water before bobbing up again. Okay, they back dropped, or did they dropped backwards into the water? Uh, it, the it's the back dropped. Um, sounds odd. They dropped back. Okay, they dropped back into the water. Okay. Repeating their displays. As they bobbed in the water, the two big creatures moved closer and closer. Then the resident male let out a much louder roar as it bobbed up. Its mane was puffed but out, but instead of dropping back down, it lunged at the other male. The other male met its attack. The other male met its attack. Maybe the other male met, uh, or just the other male was attacked, or something like that. They bit with their powerful jaws and tore at each other with clawed, webbed forepaws. Okay, so here we have an actual lion's mouth. Fur flew, and the water splashed, then roiled, good word, roiled when both dropped down under the surface to fight. The water darkened as blood spilled into it. The two splashed out of the water. They roared, snarled, and fought on until the invading male rushed out of the water. It ran into the trees, limping on three legs. They remained the remaining big creature gave chase, but only to the shore, where it stopped to puff out its chest and torn mane to roar victoriously. Puff out and puff out its chest and torn mane to roar victoriously. Okay, this had been a magnificent moment, one that reminded me of the lions on the plains. I shall call them. River lions. Yeah, I do like the calling it the invading male or challenger male. Yeah. I, I, I like that use of that word. Males have manes that lay against their necks like an extra thick ruff. They puff it out to oppress females and to warn enemies they are about to attack. All river lions have short but increasingly dense fur that is watertight. This fur comes in colors ranging from deep brown to a deep reddish brown. Lighter shades of these colors, and sometimes white, appear on the chest. All river lions display their chest colors in greeting. Males will puff out their chests. Males average 12 feet long from tip to snout to tip of tail, with fe females reaching half only half that size. Okay, see, this is a really good description of, of the length. It's straight, it's to the point, it doesn't use a lot of analogy, and it's a good uh, juxtaposition of what you are using by the journal writer um, that you previously quoted. Because he was, um, you know, he was far away and he was just trying to judge um, uh, from there. River lions live in, in wet prides, wet prides, led by a dominant male and up to four breeding females. So I know lions live in prides. I don't know what a uh, collection of otters live in, but if, if it's called a wet, wet pride, or if that's a term you came up with, yeah. 
Uh, you made up what pride. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, but some way we need to understand that wet is a noun or is a part of a, is a part of the noun that describes the name of it. I don't know if you want, uh, because hmm, because I do like a wet pride, but the water. I, mean, I don't want to water prides, river pride. No, not river prides because they're called river lions. A romp of otters. That is adorable. Mm, no, I, I kind of like... I still like wet pride. Okay. The rest of the wet pride are off... Are their offspring. Some offspring leave the wet pride at about two years of age, eager to find mates and build their own families. And see, wet prides shouldn't be capitalized either. Ah, oh, that's a great solution. A tooltip wet prides. Yeah. That's the collective noun, but not for river lines. Yeah, a romp. Romp is the collective noun for uh, otters. Yeah, I, I understood that. Uh, the remaining offspring are very content to stay. Laziness seems to be a trait of these young river lions and can lead to very large wet prides. If a wet pride gets too big, the father will drive out their older male offspring. When the mother... Then the mothers will drive out the older female offsprings. Good to know. Uh, not sure if that's taken from actual animal behavior, but I think that works really well. Habitat. River lions, as their name suggests, live mostly in rivers. Somewhat prides live in lakes that are connected to rivers or even large swamps. As long as it, these places have plenty of fish river craw and waterfowl there will be at least one wet pride about river lions eat more than water prey uh, the male will ambush unwary land creatures that come to the water often assisted by his male offspring. Once the prey is killed, the males will roar in victory. This summons the rest of the wet pride from their for their share of the feast. All right, that's the first sketch. Very good. Beasts. Okay. Yes, I think this is a, a fun, excellent article. Uh, I really like the. You have the. Uh, the difference here, you have the sidebar, which is your more um, just the facts, straightforward stuff. And I really like the idea of this article, uh, using this as an excerpt of a journal. It really ties it into the world a lot better. So, yeah, well done. Uh, I like this. So the only issue is, you know, adding the tooltip for wet pride. Um You may want to talk about the skin and furs because you talk about appearance, behavior, habitat. Um, otters were very prized for their furs and for their, their pelts. And, and here in the Mountain West, this... I live in the part of the United States where the trappers went to find the animals that they then trapped and then sent the furs back east to be made into clothing. And so we have a, a uh, we used to have a lot of 
those animals. But it would just be interesting to see if you want, you don't have to, because I think the article is good on its own. But uh, if you added something about human uses, are, were they hunted for their pelts? Or were they able to fend off humans because of their massive size? You know, uh, and because of a 12 foot long pelt of a river lion wow that could that could really <laughs> catch a fair price all right so again congratulations